Welcome back to the Plant Basics series. This is episode five and today we're going to cover extra floral nectaries. In the Plant Basics series, we cover the basics of plants, structures, features, functions, and generally how plants actually work. And we do this so that we can learn together and grow our plants, hopefully just a little bit better. Have you ever noticed these tiny little droplets either on the petioles or the backs of the leaves of your plant and you're not quite sure what they are? Well today we're going to answer a couple of questions. What are they? How do plants make them? Why? And what does this mean for growing our plants indoors? Before we get into it, if you could please interact with this video in whatever way that you feel you would like to, whether that be a like, comment, or subscribe to let me know that you're enjoying the series. So as I noted, you may have noticed some kind of sugary droplets on the backs of your leaves or the backs of the petioles of your plants and not known why exactly that they are there. Maybe you've tasted them. Maybe you've dipped your finger in there and had a little taste and realized that this was quite a sugary substance. Maybe you saw this on your plant and you thought that it may be a symptom of a pest eating your plant and leaving some juices behind. <laughs> Many of the genera of tropical houseplants that we grow indoors these days have extra floral nectaries. But before we get into it, we kind of need to understand what is a nectary at the very basis of it all. The original plant daddy, Linnaeus, our good old pal, <laughs> old goody boy, Linnaeus, who really was the founding father of a lot of our plants, botany, discovering species, and really laying such a fantastic groundwork for the work that was to be done on the research on plants. He first noted specialized tissues in a plant that secreted nectar in 1735. So he laid this basis down. And then in the 1830s, a lot of scientists conducted some research on why they think these tissues exist and what is nectar and why do plants produce this. It was thought at the time to be done to attract animals to facilitate the fertilization of plants and they were correct about this. We know that the flowering parts of plants usually produce a kind of a sugary nectar that um, allows pollinators to be attracted into the plant which can then pollinate the plant and allow them to reproduce and this is kind of a mutualistic thing. This is what our beloved bees butterflies, moths, and all our other pollinators um, really feed on. And for many pollinators, this is what attracts them to the plant flower in the first place. This sugary nectar is made of sucrose, glucose, and fructose produced by the plant. Now in episode three of the Plant Basics series, how plants use light and what is photosynthesis, we covered the photosynthesis process, and we know that a product of the photosynthesis process is glucose and a sugar essentially that the plant needs to survive. So a floral nectary can be structured or unstructured. A structured would be a specialized part of a plant normally in the flower that produces this nectar. But then are, there are unstructured floral nectaries which essentially are not specialized parts but they could be just openings on a stem or on a petiole that are, have the ability to produce and secrete nectar but they aren't particularly made for that purpose if you know what I mean. It goes without saying that in anything in the plant world this is a big generalization and while a lot of plants do actually do this there are obviously exceptions to, to this rule and a lot of plants that do things in different ways. But this is just kind of a basic understanding of what these terms actually mean. So then we get to extra floral nectaries. So a lot of the time in scientific literature, this is abbreviated to FN floral nectary or EFN extra floral nectary. And so the term extra kind of suggests, and the reason for it is that it's, it's extra. It's not necessarily used for pollination and it could be it's literally in addition to a floral nectary most of the time. And while this is not generally used for pollination, 
although extrafloral nectaries are probably a bit understudied, a lot of it suggests that it still is connected to the insects and attracting animals to the plant. And it is thought that it attracts these mutualistic animals to serve the plant some purpose other than pollination. Our plants in the wild and in their natural ranges rely heavily on um, relationships with insects and other animals to survive. And these things kind of work in tandem in a natural and balanced ecosystem. Extra floral nectaries are found in quite a few different um, genera of plants. And they can occur on things like the backs of the leaves. They could occur actually close by to flowers. They could be on a stem, on a petiole. They can occur in many different um, areas of the plant. And in general, they do actually attract insects, but a lot of the time they're attracting some kind of beneficial insect to the plant that could help the plant in some way. So in this beneficial relationship, the extra floral nectaries provide sugar as a food source for the beneficial insects. And in turn, these beneficial insects serve some purpose for the plant. And this could be by um, attacking a pest that would otherwise harm the plant. It could be protecting it from a fungal or bacterial infection. In the case of the acacia, extrafloral nectaries have been found to actually attract a beneficial insect that protects the plant from a fungal infection which could wipe out the plant. One study in 2018 on a ficus benguetensis wanted to test the protection service offered by ants attracted to the ficus um, by the extra floral nectaries and, and see how, this, how important this really was. So figs, if you don't know, are pollinated by a Aganidae fig wasp that are inside the fruit of a fig. And this is a really important process in order for a fig to be pollinated and for it to reproduce. So figs and its natural pollinator, the Aganidae fig wasp, are often parasitized by a non-pollinating fig wasp, the Chalcid wasp. This obviously then reduces the productivity of the fig pollination. So the study used um, some figs that were at different developmental stages and it used a fig that had no ants for protection and a fig that was basically the control, the ants that are um, attracted to the fig by the extra floral nectaries, which would then kill the um, parasitic wasps to allow the pollinating fig wasps to do their thing. And the study concluded that obviously when the pollinators are allowed to do their thing, this is much more productive. So the protection service offered by the ants attracted to the figs by the extra floral nectaries produced three times more pollinated fruit than those without. So this essentially proved that these extra floral nectaries were serving a really important purpose in attracting ants to the plant and allowing really a kind of a natural um, fight against these parasitic wasps and to keep uh, the balance of the ecosystem. If you look into the research, the extra floral nectaries often attract ants. They're kind of the main thing that it attracts. While it does attract other different types of animals that may have a beneficial um, service to offer the plant, oftentimes it is ants and they have a really, really close relationship with extra floral nectaries. But what does this mean for your house plants? Because we're indoors, we're not in a natural environment here. We don't have ants coming in and you know, we don't have pollination, natural pollination going on or any of those things. So our plants are just doing their thing. They're producing extra floral nectaries because they think that they are in a natural environment. And um, these plants are in their natural ranges would be doing this to serve some kind of purpose. And so it's really interesting that our plants continue to do this indoors, but it doesn't really mean anything for our houseplant care. I mean, in some cases, the extra floral nectaries, it can become a lot and it can be sticky and it can be kind of, you know, leave a residue behind on your plants. But other than that, it doesn't really have any impact on your plant care. It shouldn't be something that you're afraid of in terms of attracting ants into your home. It's, it's just not at that level. The sugary substance produced by extra floral nectaries are not known to be harmful. It essentially is just sugar. I'm not condoning you to go around tasting some of the liquids that come out of your plants. 
but um, it really is creating no harm to you um, indoors. And it, it's really sadly serving absolutely no purpose for the plant because it is never going to attract um, the beneficial insects it hopes to because it is outside its natural range. It's probably in the wrong country and uh, we don't have the insect relationships in our fake indoor environment that they would do if they were in their native habitat. I do want to note that the extra floral nectaries are different to guttation, which are water droplets that can occur on the tips of your plant leaves. And I'm actually going to cover guttation in the next um, Plant Basics series episode. So just to note that they are different things. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, it's really interesting researching such a topic um, and really getting into kind of the amazing things that our plants do in order to survive and the like sheer perfection in design and how intelligent these structures really are in order to survive in their natural environment. It is just mind blowing at all times. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned a little bit more about how some of our plants work. This is quite common on a lot of our philodendrons, but it can occur on Hoyas as well and some other genera too. So. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed learning about this. I hope that you got a little bit of information about maybe that's something happening with your plant that you didn't know what it was or why it was happening. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please interact with it in any way, shape or form that you would like to. A like, a comment, a subscribe, or even watching an ad all the way through really does help in supporting me. Thank you so much for watching this episode and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.